Now, the Great Barrier Reef has recovered from five major death events over the past 30,000 years. A report by the University of Sydney shows how the world's largest coral system has managed to regenerate from mass coral die-off caused by rising and falling sea levels. Our associate, uh, associate Professor of Geosciences and the report's lead researcher, Jody Webster, joins me now in the studio. Thank you so much for coming in to speak to us about this. So explain to us this process of of, of regeneration and of reef migration. How, how does it happen and when? Right, so we were able to recover cores from the edge of the continental shelf and um, by analysing those cores, we are able to basically reconstruct the growth of the reef um, and we were able to take a transect of cores across the shelf and then basically uh, map or, uh, the, the growth and the migration of the reef from one place to another as sea level firstly fell into the um, last ice age and then uh, as climate warmed and, and sea level rose very rapidly, the reef then migrated back up the, up the shelf. When was the last reef migration? The last reef migration or the last death event was about 10,000 years ago. So um, that was just prior to the um, initiation of the modern reef as we know it about 9,000 years. Now with reef migration, I'm presuming this also affects marine life. Of course, so the, the, the whole ecosystem and habitat um, is shifting as, as sea level and climate is, is also um, uh, changing. I'm a little sceptical ab about this sort of information getting out there because, of course, it just feeds into the climate sceptics' theories that, well, it's just a phase, isn't it? Won't, if reef can regenerate and regrow and, mass and migrate, then the whole cli global cl uh, warming is just a phase. Right, so you know, I, I certainly wouldn't put this study up as a, a beacon of hope for you know, how the, mm. the reef might go into the near future. We're really talking about um, the response of the reef to climate changes over much, much longer time scales. You know, just for example, from the, since the last ice age to um, about now, temperatures, sea, sea surface temperatures have, have risen a couple of degrees, but that's in the, in the scale of, of 10,000 years. And that's much, much slower um, than the rates of rise that we're seeing now. Given that the, the rates are still rising and also drilling is also uh, 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 occurring in that area, do you think the reef would be able to recover as well? I think it's, a, it's an open question. It depends on what time scale you're talking about. You mm. know, if the, if the reef was to, to follow its long-term geologic pattern, um, the reef would actually uh, probably die in a few thousand years anyway, mm. as we would go into the, um, the next glacial period. Mm. But it's a question of you know, what, what are we doing now with respect to um, anthropogenic warming mm. to in fact perhaps hasten that that uh, death. So it's all it, it's all a question of the scale that we're talking about um, um, in terms of the next 10 years, 20 years, 100 years. And, and I guess these are the societal timescales that we're interested in. Very fascinating. Jody Webster, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for coming in and speaking with us. Oh, you're welcome.